Hey guys, Ash here, coming back to you today with another Raid Shadow Legends Champion. Guys, this time a popular, popular request. Now, I am excited because she is an absolute beast of a champion. It is the epic Force Affinity Knight's Revenant Champion, Thylesia. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of your requests. I got a lot of them for Thylesia. I'm a pilot, you know, says enjoy the videos. Although her kit isn't exactly complicated, I like to see one on Thylesia. See, she's such a badass. I agree. We have uh, Rizzi Kaja says, I would love for you to do a guide on Thylesia from Knight's Order. Uh, Knight's Revenant, excuse me. Or Fodmore from the Bard from the Dwarves. Or Lich from the Undead. We'll get to all of them eventually, my man. This guy who I can't say his name. Shout out to all my, uh, is that Japanese viewers? Uh, make a guide on Thylesia. I would like to know your thoughts on her Blessing. I looked online, could not find anything. I went for Crushing Rent, which is a pretty good choice. We'll talk about your options on Blessings in today's video for sure. Uh, we have Zorindar. Next, Thylesia Guide, please. Zorindar, Zorander just keeps it pretty simple, keeps it pretty basic. And then we have Michael. Uh, love the gods. We'd love to do one on Thylesia. We have Michael again. Michael, man, my man. <laughs> At least you corrected the spelling from the first request four hours ago to the one day ago, right? Uh, so anyway, guys, I could keep going on and on. There's a lot of people uh, requesting Thylesia. And for good reason. She's a very, very unique and special champion. Let's talk about why. So where are you? They're right in front of my face. So she's really, really just versatile, right? She brings a lot more than just some damage and decreased defense to the table. Let's start with the A1, Weft of Madness. Attacks one enemy. We have a 75% chance to apply a debuff spread effect, taking one random debuff from the target, placing it on all enemies under Hex. I want to start here, guys, because this is a very powerful ability. Oftentimes, people overlook this. The only champion off the top of my dome who has an ability anything like this in the game on an A1. Having a debuff spread on an A1 is actually a Kemptum, right? Uh, he has very similar. In the targets under Hex, each hit also has a 50% chance of applying a debuff spread, taking one random debuff from the target and placing it on all enemies. You guys probably already know. If you don't, well, now you're going to know. I think a Kemptum is a top five most powerful epic in the game. Beast of a champion. So Thylesia has that ability. Very similar one on the A1. Granted, it's not a triple hitter, but still, it's a nice, reliable 70% debuff spread. Really, really solid. On the A2, Shrieking Voices. Three-turn cooldown. You don't need to book it to get it down even more. It's a three-turn. Attacks all enemies. Increase the duration of all debuffs on all enemies by one turn. A very, very powerful AoE debuff extender here. On the A3, this is this you do have to book. Uh, melan melancholia, melancholia, melancholia. Yeah, of course, melancholia. Come on, Ash. An AOE attack uh, places a decreased defense for two turns. So we do want to book this champion. We want her to be a reliable decreased defense champion. So getting this book down and getting this booked up on the A1, surprisingly, is going to be pretty important to get the to extract the full value. But she's definitely a champion you can try out if you're kind of on the fence or you're really limited on epic skill tomes. You can kind of try her out, see what you think. I think you might be impressed and want to book her. But it doesn't stop there, guys. She's also one of the more reliable hex placers in the game. Again, akin to a Kentum in a way. Uh, when attacking enemies under decreased defense debuffs, which she has, she has the decreased de uh, defense on a three-turn cooldown, but then she has the power of increasing the duration. So... You know, if you have her fast enough, you can potentially have that decreased defense up there a lot more often on your opponents, hence laying much more hexes. When attacking enemies under decreased defense, 50% chance of placing a hex debuff on them for two turns. Really solid hex placer. Just like I said, a debuff spread. She's landing the hex off her passive. She's extending durations of debuffs. She's placing the decreased defense, and she's got great multipliers on top of all that, guys. So she's bringing a lot to the table. Let's take a look at the multipliers here. Thanks to hellhades.com. We have a 3.5 attack multiplier on the A1. We have a 3.7 AoE multiplier on the A2, and then another 3.7 strong damage rating on the A3. So the A2 and the A3, they hit the same. One extends duration of debuffs, and one's placing the decreased defense. So a really, really good debuffer. She's actually one of obviously war main is my favorite rare debuffer uh, decreased defense champion thylesia she might be my favorite force affinity epic uh de she is she's my favorite force affinity epic decreased defense champion of the game that's a mouthful uh what about you guys and then when we get to legendaries i don't know who it would be maybe like abyss maybe abyss 
I don't know. I'm getting sidetracked here, but I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of Abbas. Anyway, another guide for another day. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take a look at her build here on Thylesia. Also, just because I saw her in the same faction, getting a lot of requests for an updated guide on uh, Rector Droth, which I will bring to you guys really soon, probably this week, because... We have the Faction War open right now as well, or the Faction open right now for Knight's Revenant, so I might record them back-to-back. -back. We'll see. Anyway, Thylesia, I'm lucky enough to have her five-star ascended, so we can talk a lot about blessings. And in today's video, we're going to do something that we've never done before. Hopefully, you guys enjoy it. We're actually going to change her blessings and see what that does to her overall damage, right? Because I'm going to be real with you guys, right? I don't have all the answers. <laughs> I think I prefer Crushing Rend on this champion, but I feel like you can make a three-way case here, right? You can go Crushing Rend. So what do, what do they do, right? Crushing Rend is uh, this champion will receive, uh, excuse, me, excuse me, each round a number of this champion's hits will ignore a percentage of the target's defense. The percentage of ignored defense depends on the level of the target. So we're getting extra attack, extra HP, extra crit damage, which are all helpful there, there obviously on this champion. Uh, we'll talk about why in just a moment here. But the first two hits each round will ignore a percentage of the target's defense, will ignore 1% defense for every 25 levels. If I had this on six stars, it would be one defense for every 10 levels. That sounds insane to me, uh, especially in PvE where they have like 300 plus levels, right? That's that's really just bonkers. Uh, so I feel like uh, Crushing Rend especially, we talked about this in the Seer video too. I feel like, you know, we can say this about every mastery, but as it scales down, man, onto the, the higher levels, dude, it can be pretty broken. Uh, but I feel like Cruelty is an interesting one too, right? Whenever this champion hits an enemy, decreases their defense till the end of the round, occurs once per hit. Uh, so we get, on this, decreased target defense by 2% per hit, up to 30% decreased defense for champions, 15% for bosses, okay? And then the last option is Phantom Touch. Granted, it's a rare blessing, but... It still has pretty interesting value here. We get the attack, the HP, and the crit damage again. We also get 75% chance of inflicting bonus damage on all of our hits. Very interesting, right? That's a, that's a big chance. It bumps up from 30 at level 3 all the way to 75. So I do want to try all three of those blessings and just uh, see what happens, right, uh, in today's video. So let me go ahead and go through the masteries here, guys. Sometimes I rebuild these champions masteries for these videos just to make sure I'm updating everything, uh, you know, the way I want it to, but I don't want to pay the 150 gems. Let's see if we stand by these choices. These are my old mastery build on this champion. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes you look at old masteries and it's embarrassing to say, especially since I have a champion guide channel that I'm trying to start for you guys, right? Putting a lot of effort into these videos, making sure that these guides actually make sense. But sometimes you look back at old, you know, video YouTube videos like three years ago that I put out, man. Oof, they were hurting for certain. And some of these, I look at the masteries from those videos, right? And I'm like, dude, what was I thinking on these some of these masteries? So I'm not doing that on this channel, but I will point out if I would change anything here. Just going accuracy, coming down charge focus. We went lower of steel for good reason. And then master hexer, a chance of extending the duration. I think this is fine. We could pick up snipe, sniper as well on that A1. So uh, I feel like if I was going to change anything here, I'd probably swap out kill streak for sniper other than that i'm happy with these masteries coming down offense going war master i feel like that's a good uh option here i don't think there's anything wrong with going helm smasher as well if you want to especially if you're using this champion mostly against waves not against bosses but we're going to get a lot of damage from the war master just because so many aoe attacks on this champion so many attacks there's so much uh damage to be had out there so i would go again for tier six war master or helm smasher uh you know you can make the case maybe for eagle eye but i try to get my accuracy elsewhere and really go capitalize on those offensive masteries on this champion all right so we have a very basic build on her triple perception for me, Perception was made for a champion like Dilesia, especially because it's easy to forge. So if you're anything like me, and I would love to hear if you're not, especially, do you probably have like really decent, really good Perception gear compared to most of your artifact sets, right? On the same level there? Because for me, I kind of get excited when I can go triple Perception on a champion. I'm just like, okay, I know I have some good per per Perception gear because I forge so freaking much of it, right? Because I play a lot of Arena and Faction Wars. Those are the two things I try to do every day, so I have a lot of forge material. So I went triple Perception. It makes all the sense in the world. We want her fast. Obviously, she's a debuffer. We want her going faster than our nukers, uh, and we want a lot of accuracy on her, right? We need the accuracy on the A2 to extend the duration as well as the A1 with a debuff spread as well as the A3 with a decreased defense. So what do we have on here for stat priority is going to be accuracy. 
accuracy, speed, attack, crit rate. However, I want to draw your attention to the base stats here. 12,700 on the HP, 1454 on the attack, and 1,002 on the defense. What does that tell you guys? We talked about this in a lot of Champion Guide channels, and honestly, or videos rather, uh, only one channel so far. Uh, it's really important, right? And, and a few of you guys have commented that it's it's made a difference. Uh, me mentioning this for like uh, the base stats and how they scale and stuff, and it's kind of got you guys to think about that too, because it's not rocket science here. But I think it's not super intuitive, especially for new players to look at this. So let's take a moment to do so. Uh, Twelve thousand seven hundred is super low HP. It's bad. It's bad. So how can we mitigate that? We can use HP on our banner and HP on our ring because it's a flat stat. HP percentage on like the chest piece, it's not going to do that much because it's going to be increase, you know, by 60% on a, on a six star. And again, at 12.7, it, it doesn't scale that well. It's not like it's 22k HP. Then we're talking. So instead, we want to try to look for defensive percentage as substats. Because percentage at a thousand scales a lot better. Because a thousand is not bad for defense for an attack based champion. You know, it's not great, but it's not bad. Let's say you know over a thousand is is okay. Now we're talking, right? So for that reason, we're just gonna get flat stat on. I mean, we can get a lot. This is a rare banner here, but we're getting six thousand HP. And again, I I sorted for defense percentage as a substat to try to bolster up her survivability. She does no good for us if she's dead, right? So first order business. Keeping her alive or having a reviver on the same team, which we're going to do. Uh, and again, I, I found a nice HP ring with defense percentage as a substat as well, right? Obviously, the attack is, is helpful as well. I'll go ahead and glyph this out. But I'm not killing myself on any nuker or debuffer, right? I'm not killing myself, I guess, outside of an arena specialist, right? For PvE, I'm not killing myself trying to maximize every little ounce of attack. She's going to get a lot of damage no matter what. I'd rather have her stay alive, right? And not aggro all the all the 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 uh the opponents all the time, right? Because she has her HP is so low. So, I think it's an important takeaway there. Now, we did go crit damage on the gauntlets and we did go attack percentage as I showed you guys before on the chest. So, we're still getting a decent amount of attack. Her total stats here are 4170 10239. She's gonna be dealing a ton of damage, right? That's that's perfect. But at least we have some survivability built in there too. 2,500 and 35,000 on the defense and the HP, respectively. That's pretty solid. Her speed could definitely get a little bit faster, but you know, that's a sacrifice that we had to make here in this build, right? You can't have it all sometimes. The limitation is the gear that you have available for this champion. And for me, all my, you know, god tier perception gear was on other champions. I think I have Mithrala still in a triple uh, perception as well. So we don't want to take all those artifacts off. Accuracy, uh, stat priorities, kind of obvious here. 100% crit rate, accuracy, some speed, survivability, attack percentage on this champion, okay? So attack percentage, we went crit damage on the gauntlets, looking for crit rate wherever we can find it here. I had to really scavenge through to find some decent crit rate substats. That's why crit rate, even on perception, it's important to keep and roll up your, your crit rate substat gear because you're going to want to oftentimes get your nukers in crit damage gauntlets. However, one, I feel like I'm in a very talkative mood today. <laughs> Jeez. Like, get to the gameplay, dude! Uh, however, I will say, there is nothing wrong. I feel like so many people are, feel like compelled that they have to put their damage dealers in crit damage gauntlets. There's nothing wrong with just going crit rate on the gauntlets and looking for crit damage as a substat instead. You're kind of flipping the script that way, uh, and it might be easier for you guys to obtain. You might have a lot of, especially on like building all your champions with crit damage on the gauntlets and crit great as substats, you're going to burn through all your crit rate substat gear pretty quickly. So why not use gear that just has a double or triple roll on crit damage and put the crit rate on the gauntlets instead, right? It, it, you're going to have the, like similar results, right? So don't sleep on that idea. All right, guys, we've talked long enough here. We're going to start out, as I mentioned, with Crushing Rend. Uh, let's go ahead and run her. We have, a, we have a, a Faction Wars open right now. Well, I'm going to have to pay a few a few gems here to reset the blessings. So we can use this champion really quickly before we, uh, before we run her. I just want to go ahead and show you that she's a champion you can use as a debuffer in so many different areas of the game. She's a very versatile. If you give her a four-star rating here on Hell Hades, you can use an arena debuffer and damage dealer and buff extender. We already mentioned what she brings. Uh, in Doom Tower Waves, incredible. All the dungeons, you can use her as a debuffer, right? Fantastic debuffer. Just going to make sure you keep her alive, right? Uh, so a lot of utility. Book value, a three out of 10. We talked about it. I actually like this champion quite a bit better booked. 
uh, personally, but you don't have to. Try her out a little bit, again, like we said before. All right, so Faction Wars, we do have Night Revenant Faction Crypt open right now. Let's go ahead, uh, stage 21 against the Red Boss. And this is the team that we have assembled here. We have Walking Tomb Drang, who, whew, Man, I love this dude. <laughs> he's he's going to be our secret weapon against the Red Boss, right? He's one of my favorite champions in the game. And then we have Sinesha in Skull Crown as control and damage dealers. I have Skull Crown in a stun set. I have Dilesia, you guys know. And then Rector Drath is going to be our uh, reviver. So let's go ahead and do this round and then switch up the blessings and just see. It will be a little anecdotal. But who knows? There might be a massive gap, you know? Like, blessings are still new enough for me that on a five-star blessing on a champion like Dilesia, it's like, okay, maybe maybe I'll be surprised. Maybe I'll be blown away. Who knows until we try, right? And that's the whole point of this channel. So here we go. You can see she is... Wow, it's hard to tell when they're all veiled up. <laughs> She's the one with decreased attack. She's on the, the far left. Let me make myself a little bit smaller here, guys. There we go. All right, so I as a debuffer on the team, you guys might be surprised that she'll probably be able to hang with Skull Crown in terms of the damage. Uh, that's how potent she is in terms of a champion who's bringing a lot more than just, you know, damage to the table as well. Uh, I don't think she'll out-damage Skull Crown, but I do feel like she will, uh, she'll be up there with her, right? Uh... So she's bringing, you know, she's kind of a dual purpose champion. She's similar to like somewhere in between a uh, Marinix and a War Maiden, you know, like if we're going to go up uh, a, a level, a little notch in terms of what they're bringing to the table uh, to just compare her to a rare and a legendary. Anyway, now I feel like I'm extra small in the corner over here. Golly. What do you guys think of this shirt? Let me show you a little bit. It's kind of, it's kind of loud, huh? It's kind of loud. I was sent this shirt from a shirt company, obviously. Uh, trying to think what the name of it. it was like five years ago, so it's not like I. It's not like it's brand new. Into the dark, into the. Uh, I'll try to find it in the background. Uh, anyway, let's see what she can do. So there's block damage up right now. Not too interesting. I I remember this wave, man. It's the Valkyrie wave. Dude, Knight's Revenant is really is really tricky. <laughs> this is this faction war, man. This is one of my, I don't think it's my most difficult faction crypt. I remember for me, the last two that I completed were dwarves and demon spawn. I didn't have, like this is way back in the day, but I didn't have duchess, I didn't have a reviver, and I didn't really have a healer. I had to use Tainix hate flower in demon spawn and like rear guard, I had to build like two rear guard sergeants or something. I remember that being very frustrating. And then the same thing in Dwarves, I had to rely on Rockbreaker, RNG, with his block damage passive in Dwarves. So I remember really struggling with those two faction wars, but I will say uh, this one was pretty tricky too. Not quite as tricky as those two. What about you guys? Have you found one faction war or faction crypt especially challenging compared to the rest? Uh, let me come back to you at the Red Boss, because we'll get there, obviously, through this wave, but... It's taken a while. You can see that debuff extension. Look at that four turns uh, on the decreased defense here. Four turns uh, in, not to mention the hex, right? Three turns, two turns. It's great synergy. She did fall down there. We'll pick her back up with good old Rector Drath in just a moment here. So I'll come back to you when we get to the red boss. Be right back, guys. Okay, this is not sponsored, guys, but it's Into the AM was the name of the uh, the company. They got kind of like loud but really cool designs. Hey, I think this is the this is the space design that I have on right now. It's not bad. I kind of want to do merch, but I don't know. I paid for somebody to design me merch. And now I, I need to follow up and like look at their designs and go through them and give feedback and all that stuff. So uh, that's where I am in the process. But if you guys, if anybody actually wants it, it's not like, I'm not going to lie to you guys. It's like a few comments, but not many people are just like, you know, trying to tear down my doors for merch or anything like that. But if there's a big demand or... If I'm wrong about that, then who knows? Maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll go ahead and and, uh, and do some. Uh, so you can see that unfortunately she's got the fear right now. Uh, she does get that. See that debuff spread? I mean, granted, didn't really wasn't wasn't that important there, but uh, you can see the trigger on that a one. Just need to have that hex down right. And keep in mind, she hits an opponent enough. We're gonna land that hex right. So. 
pretty good damage so far looking at her numbers. Uh, but again, I am curious to see like how she's going to do when we switch up the blessings a little bit, you know? I could switch up the Masteries as well, kind of put Helm Smasher or something on her. But Helm Smasher, I think that we already know about Masteries, right? Blessings for me, who knows, right? There might be a, a surprise there. But for, for Masteries, we know she's just going to be getting a little bit extra damage out of the waves if we switch to Helm Smasher. And a little bit more damage, generally speaking, on, on longer battles and against bosses and stuff like that if we switch to, uh, if we have War Master versus Helm Smasher. Sorry, I misspoke earlier. Uh, but again, great debuffer to have on the team. I really like that she can extend the duration of all buffs on an AoE, right? It's, it's this powerful ability here. Let's go ahead and see one last shot or two from Thylesia before the red boss goes down, and we'll be good to go. So there's that Hex. Keep chopping away. Can run her with some cool, like, Hex combos too, right? Can run her with, like, a rule, the uh, Huntmaster. Can run her with Thylesia as well. All right, so what do we do here? Thylesia, not bad, man. I mean, like I said, she's hanging with Skull Crown a little bit less, right? A little bit less damage. But let's go ahead and 664. Let's just go ahead. I'm not going to make you guys sit here and wait and, and <laughs> when I keep switching up the, uh, the Masteries. But I want to make sure I turn the Super Raids off so I can run her with the... I'm sorry, the Blessings, man. If I can only speak today, it'd be great. Uh, let's switch things up. Let's do... 664 is our baseline. Again, this is just a fun little experiment. I don't know if it's going to mean anything massive, but let's get rid of Crushing Rend, and let's give her Cruelty here. So this one's going to be free. Sign me up. All right, so that's all we're going to change is just that. I'll come back at the end. All right, guys, almost done with the second run here. Again, it's pretty anecdotal, but just curious nonetheless. Maybe some of you guys are as well. Let's see, 711 here. So 711 is going to be the results. Uh, so a little bit more damage, but nothing for me to say that it wouldn't fall on the margin of error there. So I don't want to read too, too much into that. Uh, so a little bit more damage with cruelty. Again, it's tough to say. Let's go ahead and put Phantom Touch on her and see what that does. So uh, again, we'll uh, we'll be right back after the third run. All right, guys, here we go. Phantom Touch. We put out 652,000, and I do want to go ahead and draw your attention to the total time here. It was a little bit longer. We got bad luck. We weren't landing, or I should say, uh, Drang was not landing really any smites that round. So in theory, she should have time to do more damage. So I'm going to say Phantom Touch is not what I would go with, but the other two, I think that, you know, we'll go with whatever makes sense for you. So I'm going to go ahead and change them again for you guys before I let you go. Uh, but yeah, I felt like that was a, you know, again, eh, don't read too, too much into it, but I, I enjoyed the exercise personally. I think cruelty or crushing rend, I'm going to go back to where it all started. I think that crushing rend is probably going to be the way to go here. Only cost me 600 gems to figure that out. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you want to see any guides in the future. Unfortunately, no lore today on Thylesius. We're going to end the video here. Thanks. And as always, take care, guys.